Hi, I'm Michael from EngineerDog.com, and today I want to do an experiment with the Simple Sumo Robots to show you how you can use science to kick your friend's butt. So, uh, I've got two stock standard Simple Sumo Robots out of the box. They're just different colors, and what can happen with these is they're equally matched. We put them head to head. They don't make any advances over time because they neither one has the advantage. Um, but the cool thing about the Simple Sumo Robots is there's mechanical mods you can make uh, in addition to programming uh, to give yourself an advantage. And I'm going to show you how you can use physics to figure out what's going to happen before it even happens. So I want you to now I want you to ask yourself uh, what do you think is going to win between the robots uh, with this one getting double width tires. Let me put this mod in. Boom, it's like a funny car with the big back wheels, right? We're going to in increase traction. Or uh, this robot, I've got um, pennies already all weighed out uh, and placed in this, in this box, effectively doubling its weight. So double the weight or double the surface area. So I want you to think about that when we look at this free body diagram, because this very simple diagram shows uh, all the forces at play uh, with a standard robot where we have um, the force of gravity is equal to the mass times uh, the acceleration of gravity and then the normal reaction force uh, according to Newton's law there's an equal and opposite force for every for every force so um, there's that there are vertical forces and the horizontal forces at play are the motor applying a torque through the wheel to rotate this that's the force applied and then the friction force uh, it's the force that's also equal and opposite. It's opposing that. Now we can calculate the frictional force knowing the coefficient of friction between rubber and this wood surface times the normal reaction force. Uh, this, is a, this is a standard equation that you can find. Now as it turns out, the force that you can apply with the motor, the maximum force that you can possibly apply, apply is equal to the force of friction, what we're going to start calling the tractive force. Because if the applied force is greater than tractive force, then you start slipping. And when it starts slipping, you start using the uh, coefficient of kinetic friction, is what it's called. And it's slightly less than the coefficient of static friction, which is when you're not slipping. It's when objects are just sitting still. In any case, nowhere in this free body diagram describing the full, all the forces involved with these robots do I see surface area. So what I expect to happen here, because I've increased the mass on this robot, right? Oops. getting carried away. Here. So because I've increased the mass on this robot, increase the mass, which increases the normal reaction, which increases the force of friction, which increases the applied force. Um, I'm going to bet that the heavier one's going to win, because nowhere on there do I see traction, or nowhere on there do I see surface area. Jesus. Alright, let it rip. Oh! Welcome. Welcome and goes and keeps going. So we predicted that one, guys. Um, so, do these things help at all? I mean, was it just because this one's super duper heavy? It's a lot heavier than those, right? What if it was against a robot that was equally matched in the same weight category, right? So you fight, you, you box people in your same weight class. That's how you make it fair. So I've got my little scale here. This is just like $10 from Amazon. Um, let's make sure. That's 276.9. This, um, I had checked this, which should be just about the same weight, and it's evenly distributed if you just use the penny thing empty. There we go. 272.9. What did I say over here? 277.2. So they're really close. Alright, now let's see what's going to happen. Same weight, double surface area. What do you think is going to happen? What happened? They're evenly matched. Does, does doubling the surface area not help at all? Well, not according to the equations, it doesn't. But that's really counterintuitive. 
because you know, like I said, funny cars, they have their, am I even using that term right? There's race cars that have larger back tires. So it's like, why would cars do that when you would, uh, in any case, the reason is this equation works really well for like, like a coffee cup sliding across, you know, a wooden surface. There's um, a predefined surface area. The materials aren't changing. It's all room temperature. It's all very clean and, and it works nice. But car tires physically deform whenever like cars are heavy and the tires are like balloons with this rubber. And have you ever seen those vacuum robots where it's like a vacuum with a balloon full of sand and you like put it over something and then you suck all the air out and it just like <laughs> grabs stuff and you know, you can, well that's what's happening when you have a car with a tire, a pneumatic tire and you put all this weight on it, it just it physically deforms. You go around a corner, the tire patch is changing its geometry, it's doing all this weird stuff and, and there's non, it introduces non-linearities in such a way that you can no longer predict with an equation this simple what's going to happen. And, and, and the result is that wider tires in those cases on cars do in fact increase traction and that's why they do Okay, it. so the last experiment we just did, we proved that adding mass had more of an effect on the Sumo's ability to push than adding traction. But it was very, it was, it was a non-numerical experiment. We didn't actually punch any numbers, we just kind of put them together and smashed them into each other and saw what happened. But I've created some toys, and these are also shared freely on, on Thingiverse Instructables and my website and all of the above. You can use to run experiments to actually quantify what we're looking at. So right now I'm going to do an experiment, find my marker. We're going to quantify the coefficient of friction. So it's not some ethereal number that we just pull out of the air. This is something that we determine and we can use for future uh, equations and experiments. So let's see. This is the pulley with a bearing in it, so it's ideally frictionless and not applying any additional forces to our system. Got it taped down here, hopefully that's good enough. And a weight hanger. Um, let's see, yeah, I'll, me I'll measure the mass of that afterwards. And it's hooked up to this little string I found and a special back piece so that when I lift up the rear end and install the back piece, There. Now I can apply weights and see how much it can take, how much force it can take before it starts getting pulled back. Um, now I did some, like initially I started this project, it's like I need to find some weights cheaply. It's like American pennies, it's like the perfect weight, it's the cheapest thing. I got like $3 invested and I have like th um, 300 incremental units of weight that I can, uh, that I can use. So let's see what happens. We put, plug them in and just add it until it starts. There are you. There, we pulled it all the way to the top. Not there yet. Whoa, that's, good. that's too many. Let me try one at a time. Yep, still too many. Things going nuts on me. There, one at a time. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. That's the straw that broke the horse's back. So, okay, so I took a second to uh, erase this stuff and make space for a free body diagram of the system that you just saw with the robot pulling the weight over the pole. So we have W equals M1G. This is the uh, weight of the pulley is equal to the mat. Uh, the weight of the weight hanger is equal to the mass of the weight hanger times the acceleration of gravity. And then it, there's the string. And the most force that the sumo can pull with is the force of friction, which is equal to mu, uh, which is the coefficient of friction, times the mass of the sumo times the acceleration of gravity. So we put that in equation form. We can say that the weight. Um, this weight hanger is equal to the force of friction. Uh, so M1G equals mu times M2 times G. And that's nice because we can eliminate gravity altogether. I knew what it was, but now my equations are nice. And as it turns out, mu that we're looking for, the coefficient of friction is equal to the ratio of the mass of the weight hanger divided by the mass of the sumo bot. 
So all we have to do is weigh them and figure it out. So let's see, turn it on. I'm going to measure it in grams. I'm going to tear it. There we go. 242 grams. That's M2. That's 242 grams. My handwriting's not the greatest. And then the mass hanger all together is 103.7. Cool. That's, let's see. Let's see, I'm not going to be able to do that one in my head. 103. Point, no, no. 103.7 divided by 242. Oh my, my calculator sucks. 0.429. Cool. Equals 0.429. Now I can do a quick Google search and just say, I don't know, what is the coefficient of friction between tires and asphalt? Between plastic and other plastic? I don't know. I'm just so you can. Th this is a ratio that is directly comparable to anything else, any of the results that you might find if you were to, to Google that. And we know from the experiment before that maximizing this number gives you the most traction um, so your sumo bot performs better. Now, <clears throat> there's different materials that you could print this tire out of. There's different geometries that we can try. Um, all of the above to try and maximize your sumo's performance. So I hope that was... Uh, uh, an educational experience for you and uh, if you enjoyed it let me know in the comments and uh, I'll do some more.